basically the simple thought, how could we ever get a player of this magnitude on our team? We've been drafted, you know, in the low 20s and the you know 30s or something forever, and, and that pick has never allowed us that kind of opportunity. So uh, John did an incredible job. And I think this is just another statement for, for John Snyder, man. He has done such a remarkable job for so many years. The Hutzpah that go for it, and he did it again. And, and uh, I'm just, we're all fired up about it. and looking forward to and Jamal coming to our club. You know, for us, um, you know, I, I certainly don't feel like this is a precedent um, for, for a player to, to shoot his way out of town. I feel like we had a, a great contingency plan for any situation. It just so happened that the situation worked out the way it did. But um, no, I, I'm not. I'm not concerned about that precedent. The first voice was Pete Carroll, coach of the Seahawks. Second voice, Joe Douglas, GM of the Jets. And look, I agree with Joe Douglas's take there. If you give Jamal Adams away for a fourth-round pick, then he has shot his way out of town, as Douglas phrased it. When you get two first-round picks, a third-round pick, and Bradley McDougald for Jamal Adams and a fourth-round pick in 2022, you can't say no to that. We talked about that yesterday. This is not, hey, Jamal, we just surrender here, go, leave, get out of here. It's, we got an offer that we have to take because we got a guy who doesn't want to be here. We'll gladly take the compensation and move forward. Yeah, no, no, exactly right. I mean, it was, it's a win-win situation. I mean, really, I think both guys explained it perfectly. You know, the Jets, hey, yeah, they, they, they traded away their best player. Okay, there was a situation there. He wants big money. He was disgruntled. He didn't want to be there. Well, it didn't hurt the, dra- the draft price. And, you know, again, Let's just make sure we make this clear. You know, the Jets aren't one player away. They're, they're not like, I'm not going in the season going like, oh, man, if they just kept Jamal Adams, they might have gone to the Super Bowl. Like, come on. You know, it's, it's it, everybody, especially up here in the New York, New York area, which Jamal Adams, everyone says he's a clown and, oh, he's got a big mouth, blah, blah, blah. He talks crap about Adam Gase. And then everybody goes, look at he, he's right. You know, and everyone jumps on Adam Gase. So he caused a, a crap storm here for the Jets and some of their players and their organization. But Joe Douglas did a great job in getting great value for Jamal Adams. And Jamal Adams got what he wanted. He's an awesome football player. And he went to a team that really fits his style, I think, on and off the field. And it should work, I think. We'll see. Yeah, and Joe Douglas also said yesterday they're not punting on the 2020 season. And, and I agree with him because, look, you had – a storm brewing with Jamal Adams with the article that came out on Friday where he took aim at the head coach just a few days before it's time to show up and try to get everyone on the same page. It was going to be a huge distraction. It was going to be a huge problem. Was Jamal Adams going to act like Jalen Ramsey and hold himself out of practices and games because he claimed to be injured? Was he going to openly disrespect Adam Gase? What was he going to do next in his effort to get out of town? Now you've turned the page on that with sufficient compensation, and a guy who replaces him. Now, Bradley McDougald isn't Jamal Adams, Chris, but tell me what you think of Bradley McDougald as a guy who steps in to the job that Jamal Adams had. Well, he's a really solid NFL starting safety. You know, a guy that can be a strong safety or free safety, can do a little bit of both, but he's a fearless tackler. I mean, he throws his body around like a like a crazy man. Okay, so, you know, I look at it from that standpoint, certainly not the talent Jamal Adams is, but... You know, this is without a, without question one of the 32 best in the game. So, you know, that that they got a guy that they're going to be able to depend on and certainly, you know, fill that position. Fill it to the position of the way Jamal Adams is. Will they be able to do all the creative things around, you know, him that they did around Jamal Adams? No, they're not. He's not that guy. But you're not going to look at him and go, oh, you know, they got Felice there. Look, he's the weak part of our defense. No, he will not be that. He's good in pass. He's good in run. Like I said, he is a legitimate NFL starting safety. Yeah, and and uh, you, if there isn't a huge drop, there's a drop, but if it's not a dramatic drop – and you've picked up two first-round picks and a third-round pick, and you gave up a fourth-round pick next year to get that third-round pick. To you know, they always they always have that. I, I feel like they just want to prove to everyone that they're being very careful and they're being very meticulous. We got to get the balance just right. Well, the two first-round picks is fine, but we need a. I need a three, and I'll give you a four. Like you know, we just got to get it just right. But you look at the whole package; it's a great deal for the Jets. It eliminates a major problem, and we'll see what Bradley McDougald can do paired up with Marcus May in the secondary. And uh, and you're right. They're not one player away. They weren't going to be a Super Bowl contender 
this year with Jamal Adams. They're not going to be a Super Bowl contender without Jamal Adams. For starters, they just need to build on how they finished last season, 6-2, and two, and try to be a playoff contender and then build on that into 2021. I know every coach and every player and every GM and every owner says we're trying to win the Super Bowl because you got to make the fans believe that so they show up for the games. This year that doesn't really matter, but it's okay to have – more realistic objectives. And I think for the Jets, the realistic objective is to just be in the hunt for a playoff berth and maybe get one of those seven spots in the AFC. Yeah, I, I, that's exactly right. Or just show, you know, improvement in the football team as far as the way it looks, being competitive. Whoa, Sam Darnold took that next step. That question's out of our mind. We know he's the franchise now. I think if they can just give positive vibes there, and like like Jets Nation, let's be realistic here. And you know, I, I know Adam Gase seems to be some easy guy to jump on. I know he had the googly eyes during the press conference and all that. But you know, again, I'll, I'll stand strong. I think he's a better coach than people are giving him credit for. I mean, he, it wasn't like a team of all stars down there in the Dolphins, and they were competitive every year and went to the playoffs with a bunch of guys that I think if we sat here right now, we'd go, "Damn, I can only name like two or three guys off the top of my head on the team." So, you know, let's give it a chance to develop. I like what I've seen from Joe Douglas. I still am a believer in Adam Gase, like I said, and they just they need to show it on the field this year. Sam Darnold can't get hurt. He can't get mono. They need to have a complete season where they show true growth as an organization, and hopefully that happens. Yeah, I doubt that he's going to get mono again. No. That would be one <laughs> hell of a coincidence. Yes. But, uh, but, yeah, having your starting quarterback gone after just a game or two for several weeks because he has mono, that tends to put a dark cloud over the season. But they and they're, 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 it was a crippling start to the season last year from a schedule standpoint. You saw that coming, and they went one and seven. Right. And then they turned it around and went six and two down the stretch. And the fact that they didn't just throw in the towel and tank, I, there, there's, there, there's reason to believe that they can be competitive. Not Super Bowl caliber, but competitive and lay the foundation for something that could flourish in 2021 right. if they're patient and if if some things go their way and if they make the most out of the two first-round picks they're going to have in 2021, their own plus Seattle's. All right, uh, Bradley McDougal trying to help make the team into a Super Bowl contender right away. He took to social media to try to get Jadavian Clowney to sign with the Jets. Now, look, it's one thing for McDougal to want Clowney. The Jets have to want to pay him. They have to believe in him. But he's still available. He's eventually going to sign with somebody. And uh, how would you feel about the Jets as a contender if all of a sudden it came out that they had managed to land Jadavian Clowney? Well, it, it, you know, you know let, let's not forget, this defense was damn good last year. You know, that that's the one thing I think we've kind of lost on the shovel. Like Greg Williams, he coached the top 10 defense in football last year and did a phenomenal job with without a lot of like household names. You get a guy like Jadeveon Clowney, we know it's the master of F the play up right there in the NFL right now. Now, I have a hard time believing that Jadeveon Clowney, just from everything we've heard, it sounds like he wants to be a part of a team that can compete and contend right now. And from that standpoint, that's where I go, that I don't know makes sense. You know, I, I don't know. I, in the, my heart of hearts, I feel like with Seattle clearing a little space and everything like that, that it's going to end up there. I don't know that. I'm just, just taking a shot in the dark. But, yes, yeah, certainly would make me look at them a little different and go, ooh, okay, maybe I thought the best they could do was, you know, seven and nine, and now you get a Jadeveon Clowney. All right, maybe they could be a pain in the butt, be eight and eight, nine and seven. I don't know, something like that. But not going to, like, rearrange or change my, my total thoughts of their team. Hey, with all these Patriots opting out, the the, the vacuum well, at the top of the division. That's what's crazy. All of a sudden, it's right. a little more intriguing, right? right? Maybe maybe if you are the Jets, you think, you know, uh, but maybe the you know the Patriots, these guys are conscientiously choosing to walk away in New England. There is an opportunity there. And if we add a Jadavian Clowney, uh, maybe we can compete with the Bills and maybe we can end up winning the division. I, I yeah. Look, it's, it's, it's not an easy call to make when you are a team that clearly isn't in that Super Bowl window. And right. you have to convince a guy who's looking for a Super Bowl window to join your team. But, uh, you know, at this point, I think Clowney just wants to be wanted. And it doesn't feel like there's anyone that really wants him at this point, in large part because you still can't determine whether or not he's completely healthy. And it's hard to value a guy that is going to show up in spurts but may not be able to show up for the full season. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.